I can't be here for long, and then when I leave, I can't come back. So like, I'm up for listening because your your secrets will be long, long gone. You know, they they ain't sticking around. Shut the door, dear. Uh, Nifix shuts the door and summons a small creature of some kind to push it shut because the lock's now melted. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's, a... what's what's small and heavy in the animal kingdom? A capybara. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, pot belly pig. <laughs> it's a, it's it's a it's a capybara doorstop now. <gasps> Does it have like a little doorman outfit? It's <laughs> very cute. He's got a little bow tie. <laughs> His little hat. He's got a little clipboard to check the list, make sure that you're meant to come in. <laughs> Um, so why don't we just jump into the q and I'm sure Netflix has a lot of questions about this thing she has stumbled upon, and so does the audience. Uh, just a lot of wild theories out there. Let's get the facts straight, Laura. Yeah, so, first question. How long have you been the Lady of Pain, then? Sharon says, Oh god, we're gonna have to go back to the beginning of the story now, aren't we? Are we talking beginning of the story, like, you know, when I died and my story started, or are we going, like, way back? Oh, no, way back. Way back, dear. I don't know how far stories go back. Oh, they they can always go back further, as far as I'm concerned. You can't go back far enough to tell a good story. I, I don't know. I don't read a lot of books. I, I, don't know how, I don't know how many pages they have when you go back. <laughs> yeah, the only book Nifix has ever read is Ready Player One. Boom, got her! <laughs> I was gonna go for like. Holy shit, owned! I was gonna say the only book she's ever read is the instruction manual to SSX Tricky. Oh, that's good too. I love that song. <laughs> um, but no, as Sharon says, well, I think where the story starts is uh, well, all all the gods died. I, I suppose you're familiar with that. Yeah. But nobody's really sure what happened to the Lady of Pain. Uh, some people think she died too, and just passed on with all of them. Uh, other people think. That sigil was a, was, a, was a prison. The gods were keeping her kind of inside. That's why it's called the Cage, the city of Sigil. And that once the gods died, she escaped out to wherever she was trying to get the whole time. And now she's out there somewhere. And I guess the last theory was that she was keeping the gods in check. And once they were gone, she served her purpose and she moved on. Uh, maybe she polymorphed herself into a unassuming form maybe she's out there in elysium right now just having herself a good old time in a in a olive grove somewhere who who can say and at some point you felt confident enough that there was no lady of pain to go like yeah i'll i'll tempt fate i'll i'll be the lady of pain this this definitely won't you know draw some anger from an actual one out there <laughs> Oh, no, child. Not me. No, see, uh, so you're familiar with the exemplars, the creatures who are made out of alignments, angels are lawful good, demons are chaotic evil, the modron, the slotty. Um, yeah. Do you know who the neutral exemplars are? I feel like I should probably know this, but I, I'm not the best at remembering things. <laughs> this is me, Austin. I have lived in mortal terror that someone was going to ask all season because it kind of gives away the whole twist, <laughs> but it's also just very easily askable information. Um, she she tells you, I'm just going to do this out of character because it's a little complicated. Uh, the neutral exemplars are a creature called the Rilmani, R-I-L-M-A-N-I. Uh, they were made for second edition and have basically never been mentioned since. There's like two pages of information about them, even though they are really a secret cabal of neutral creatures who are trying to keep the world in balance. They're a big deal, but nobody gives a shit about them and they haven't been brought back for third, fourth or fifth edition. So it's a weird mm. quirk of the yeah, lore. That, that sure seems like a, like a faction that would line up with Lady of Hurt trying to stop wars from happening. Yeah, the real Marnie, they're, they're very, they're very secretive. They don't really mix with outsiders, and they keep their secrets. They only really come together every hundred years or so. They have a big meeting, and where they decide how the universe is out of balance, and they tip it back. Sometimes they help the demons, sometimes they help the angels, sometimes they help the Sladi or the Modron. But ever since Lady of Pain died, every time they meet, they pick a new Lady of Pain. Every time you say... 
the name that I'm not going to say because I'll fuck it up. All I hear is Armani. Oh, the real Armani. <laughs> Yeah, I just keep hearing you say Armani, and I'm like, oh, I don't know about Armani. <laughs> I mean, I've heard it. I know it's close. <laughs> oh, no, actually, I'm impressed by that. Oh, thank you. Uh, if you Google them, you're going to be very disappointed because they just look like humans. They're like humans. Oh. With, they're humans with gray skin, and the only lore about them is they really like neutrality, and then they meet every hundred years to decide about how to be more neutral, and that's all. <laughs> that's all that really exists about them. Oh, so they could be wearing Armani because it's basic. <laughs> they could be. <laughs> I didn't whisper that. So, so how long has it been you then? Well, I haven't been keeping that close a thing on it. You know, after a while, you stop counting the birthdays; it gets embarrassing. But uh, fifty or sixty years now. So, this is an out of character question to Austin. Um, mm-hmm. The the timelines of how long we were all dead before we were brought back were deliberately vague. Do we know sort of any particularly notable events this means that that she was the woman of hurt for? I mean, all of them involving you. She, yeah. Nifix immediately knows that Sharon killed King. Oh, spicy. Um, so, yeah, so Nifix is going to ask just... Uh, how did you end up doing this? Well, the Psychopomps, we were created by the gods to be neutral arbiters of souls. So we're one of the only other creatures made out of neutrality. So the real Mani often pick Psychopomps, although it's a closely guarded secret. Cato doesn't know anything about this, in case you're wondering. I've got to ask. Why did she kill King? Well, after Cato had his... I don't know what you'd call it, but a kind of crisis where he stopped being a psychopomp and got into soul trading and he wanted to make the world better. So he was going to establish the Furies, but he wanted people who appreciated life and death, which means people who had died and were brought back. Uh, But he couldn't find any suitable candidates. And so I was helping him research potential people and I came across somebody who was, and I don't mean to be mean, but a a bit simple-minded, could follow orders, very strong, and he was just a mercenary out there just doing work for just criminals, sellsword shenanigans. And so I I turned his soul over to Cato, as it were. He didn't ask me to. I was just trying to help. So you killed him knowing he was going to come back pretty quick. Was that what I'm getting out of this? Of course, yeah, immediately, dear, I didn't murder the person for no reason. For King, it was just like a nap. He he probably didn't even feel it. And if anything, it was a more stable future for his daughter, because mercenary work always dries up. There's no loyalty in that. Cato will take care of him in Little Lime. What's your plan now? Because clearly someone has twigged what you're doing. Dear, I believe we both found ourselves in the same boat, which is running and hiding forever. We both made front page news. Well, see, this is what I mean. You, I came and found you in exactly 100% the first place I would think to look for you. Which is why I ask. I ask if you're running or if you're just waiting here to be found. I mean, my house is a boat, so <laughs> I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna leave. But, but I can't show my face without people putting it together. It's, I was stabbed very publicly. Yeah. Yeah. And once nobody shows up in the morgue with a hole in their head matching the blade, they will figure out that it was somebody without blood. And, well, it's only a matter of time. So you and I are very much in the same discotheque-shaped boat. When I I started down this road, I assumed that this was it for me, that I was just going to be alone in this. Because... Of course I assumed I would. Why wouldn't I? It, all evidence said that. I think it might be nice to have someone else around who is on the run for trying to do something they thought was right. Dear, I've never made a secret of my preference for you over your teammates. After I gave Cato the the em- empty-headed swordsman, he went and got a, a serial killer... And an assassin. So it was quite a relief to see he had 
recruited you with all your potential. I gave you, I gave you that ore, and I really had dreams for you. I was. <laughs> this may sound silly, but I was kind of hoping maybe I could pass on this burden to you when I was done with it. I don't know that I'm ready to think that far ahead, but. How well, about... no, it's it's ruined now, dear. Oh, I was stabbed okay. in the face in public. Okay. There's not yeah. gonna, there's not going to be any lady of pain okay. anymore. But that's that's fair. But my my point was, maybe for now we settle for on on the run crime buddies. That's true, by the way. That if if this campaign had gone a different way, Sharon was literally going to offer for Nivix to be the new lady of pain if the lady oh. of pain was not unmasked. Oh, that's that's oh, that's real wild. <laughs> <laughs> So that that was a possible ending, was Nifix crouched on a building like Batman, wearing the Lady of Pain's mask. Which, by the way, gives her the power to cast, like, maze and so forth without mm. concentration checks. That's where that power comes from. Some people are yeah. asking, like, how was that encounter balanced if she wasn't the real Lady of Pain? And it's because the real Moni gave her the, the mask that gives her the, that magic. Yeah. Um... So yeah, while Nifix is obviously not super thrilled about every choice that uh, that that she that she has made, um, I think Nifix is happy to have on on the run crime buddy. I'm curious if anybody has any more questions about this because, so from my perspective, the hints that Sharon was the woman of hurt were go, go back as far as like I think the first time her and King interacted when King rolled insight and I said Sharon won't make eye contact with you no matter what you do oh yeah I forgot about that and then later Sharon said I'll meet you at the race and then the Sharon in the race was a slod so what where was Sharon oh she was at the end of the race preparing to help cheat oh Remember when you got to the end and the virtues were there and they were too strong? Well, imagine if suddenly they all would have been full of blades. <laughs> See, every time you ask us if we have questions, I don't know why, but my mind goes like completely blank. Like, have you seen that post with all the pimples? And it's like, oh, those <laughs> thick head, no thought boys. <laughs> Huge heads, no thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> every time I put on the spot because as soon as like I have to I'm like I'll be fine right and then I have to perform and I'm like ah. Uh. and the other thing was yeah when uh, uh, when Netflix went to find Simon uh, the Lady of Pain was just like posted up in a building watching which is weird <laughs> it was just because Sharon just wanted to make sure you didn't get hurt going to face a mercy killer alone oh Jesus oh how did we not know also, the other thing was, in every scene, up until Cordelia uh, demonstrated she was fake, Sharon was, like, 100% chill. And then in every scene after, she was slamming hard drugs. Oh, well, I mean, I you gotta go on a bender, like, every now and then. Yeah, but they all... Like she once always, a year. She only started doing bone juice and stuff after you found out the Lady of Pain was fake. That I don't know that i don't know about her bone juice habits <laughs> on screen the I correlation meant. is not causation okay i thought it was too good of a hint to be like why does she suddenly develop a fucking anxiety disorder and start being cryptic <laughs> that's called life that's true but like yeah in nifix's big day out she was like i just let everybody down and i don't know how to handle it and i don't want to talk about <laughs> it just sounds like depression i don't know <laughs> I mean, yeah, I've had a bunch of friends who've been like that, and, like, none of them were the Lady of Pain. Yeah! (laughs) I guess that's fair. (laughs) I'm not the Lady of Pain. I spent the entire day asleep yesterday. Um, So at this point, I want to draw attention to something on Nivix's character sheet. You picked for your last level, which is a spell, which in the Forgotten Realms is called Mordekainen's Sword, but in other settings it's just called Arcane Sword. It's an ability where basically you enchant a sword to fly around and kill people. Yeah. It takes a uh, a component, a spell component you don't have, which I said to the lore at the time when she picked it, I'm sure you'll find one eventually, which is me secretly thinking, ah, while Nifix is on the run, she'll break into the Doomguard armory and grab a sword she can enchant. Um, but actually I have a better idea now, which is hanging on Sharon's wall is Cordelia's old angel bone pickaxe. Oh yeah. That you gave to Sharon. I guess she's sharpened it now. It's more of a angel bone scythe because she's a psychopomp. Um, it just extremely goth vibes from. That's this. extremely rude. Do I have an arcane scythe? That's fucking great. 
I mean, I think Sharon will carry it around because you're already carrying the ore. But if you want to cast that spell, Arcane Sword, we will just reflavor it to be Arcane Scythe, which means it'll jump out of her hands and fly around and kill people on its own while she does other shit. That's that's a thing I can cause to fly around while I'm no clipped. <laughs> yep, uh. Nifix is pretty cool and good at stuff. I, I finally have a character in Dice Funk who is competent at fighting because of a bunch of abilities that do not exist within D&D. <laughs> yeah, no, you've a bunch of uh, decisions that you made to basically make yourself the villain of this campaign, to which I think actually Sharon says to you, Nifix, when did, when did we become the villains? I mean... The when feels real arbitrary, considering all of the people who are considering us the villains are probably the people who I considered villains really not that long ago. I mean, Sharon does not feel bad about killing King or mutilating Blake or stabbing Cordelia. And King but- and Blake and Cordelia didn't feel bad about murdering people their entire lives. Oh no, Cordelia deserves everything she gets. So as Sharon and Nifix compare notes, uh, you notice the music in the club come down and there's a murmuring from the dance floor. Something's going on in the other, uh, in the rest of the building. Oh. Um, Nifix is going to no clip and just poke her head through the wall to like have a sneaky look. <laughs> oh yeah, basically <laughs> you can, you can peep on anything you want now. Yeah. Um, Nifix, you look through the wall and you see that a group has entered the discotheque, uh, about two dozen people who are heavily armed and they don't see you because it's a dark club and you're just kind of peeping through a wall in a weird place that no one would expect a face to come out of. <laughs> uh, so they don't see you, but the, this group of people, very diverse, there's a human, a dwarf, an elf, a, a, a one of everything, basically all armed swords, bows, staves, wands, and so forth. And they, their a leader steps forth and says, "Nifix, come out, Nifix. You're under arrest." Uh, do I recognize this person, or do I just have the vibe of, "Oh shit, the cops are here"? Yeah, no, it's the cops. Okay, um, or perhaps more accurately, it, it's a group of bounty hunters. Yeah, uh, so Nifix is going to come back into the room um, and look, look to Sharon and go. I think it's time we got out of here. Sharon picks up her scythe and puts on her mask. How do you expect we're going to get out of here, sugar? Simple. We do it together. For you to draw I'm a shapeshifter Have no face to show Please don't take off my mask My All right, so last we left the rest of the party, uh, you were approaching the summit of the Silver Heaven. Uh, at the top of this mountain, there are actually piles of treasure. Do you recall this detail? Uh, no, but I believe it. It's been a number of arcs, but when you went to the Cathedral of Stars at the end of the first arc, it was full of treasure. There was a fight in the treasure room, and like Blake. Oh, didn't I sit like on a throne? Yeah, it was a throne dragon thing. Throne yeah. dragon, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's up? What's up with those was, treasures? Was this that? Was that this fucking season? <laughs> I know. Yeah, I know. That was where I was too. I was like, yeah. what? There's, there's no I, treasure. I remember the throne dragon. I thought that was like fucking season four or something. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. So all that treasure was in the Cathedral of Stars and then the Metatron threw the cathedral into the mountain. And so this entire mountain is treasure scattered all over the summit. And I remember after we did that recording, I asked Lauren, like, hey, why didn't you take any of the treasure? There was like mountains of treasure. Do you remember this conversation? 
No, what did I say? <laughs> you were like, oh, because it's definitely cursed. Oh, yeah, it's definitely cursed. It super is. Yeah, no, it's a terrible, deadly curse. I was really excited for somebody to get, but nobody <laughs> even tried to take the treasure. We all know. I'm, I'm, here's the thing. It's clearly cursed. It's not going to stop Lynette from being real tempted to take some good shiny things. I mean, I think she should be tempted, but I think she also knows it's terribly cursed and it's not the time to be getting cursed yeah, by no, treasure. Yeah, no, she's, she's, she's going to win out on this this battle of wills, but, you know, there's going to be that little voice in the back of the head just going, shiny, 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 shiny. <laughs> uh, so yeah, it's very shiny up here as you reach the summit and there are four angels, or rather one virtue and three lanterns. The virtue is patience, an angel made of light wielding a spear, and the three lanterns, which are the balls of lights with little wings, they look like like the fairies from Zelda, charity, humility, and diligence. And those lanterns fly into the piles of gold to hide because they do not have powerful fighting ability. They just give passive buffs. Uh, we know that diligence makes patience faster. Humility makes you all shrink until you're tiny and you can be stepped on and killed. And charity, uh, you she gives out weapons. So... I mean, Patience already has one, but presumably has more buffs to give out. So Patience is the only actual threat, although he will make you s slower as the fight goes on. So that that's the situation. There's one angel up here with a, a weapon, and then there are three little balls of light that are hiding in all this treasure that you'll have to find because you can't overcome Patience with all these buffs online. Uh, Patience is going to go first uh, because with the aura of speed that Diligence does and the aura of slow that Patience does... The, 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 well, I said this before, this is like the Flash fighting somebody who's wearing boots made out of concrete. And Patience <laughs> is going to fly towards... Who's the first person up the mountain? <laughs> Damn it. Sorry. Cordelia won initiative, so you're the first person up, and it's fun for you to get stabbed. Again. Again. Crit! Oh, by Cordelia. 26. God damn, yeah. And 10 misses. So that's going to be a crit and a hit. Uh-oh. Oopsie daisy. Uh, Cordelia, that's 29 as you get speared right in your no! tube. Oh no, not the tube. Oh. Not again. Is, is that the noise you make? No, yeah, that was that was me. He stopped. <laughs> okay, fun. No, uh, not again. <laughs> I trained <laughs> for this. It's D and D. You're gonna get stabbed a lot. It can't be a defining characteristic. <laughs> uh, Cordelia, you're up first. Uh, Patience is there uh, with the spear, and you know that the people who are making this fight impossible are hiding around here. I'm actually gonna write down three numbers. Uh huh. And if you want to attack a random treasure pile, that will be a D20 because you're just doing it randomly. So there's a three out of twenty chance of hitting. If, that, if that's how you want to handle it. But okay. otherwise, one target. All right. So I'm going to... You said I roll a d20? Mm-hmm. To pick a pile of treasure? Yep. Okay. It's number six. Okay. So uh, you t what what are you using? I'm going to use a cantrip, Acid Splash. So Cordelia just ho holds her cameo aloft and just splashes some acid on the treasure and nothing happens. Well, but now that treasure, we know there's nothing in there. Uh, yep, that's true. Uh, One Blake, gone. You're welcome. <laughs> Blake, it's your turn. All right. Well, I'm going to uh, cast a cloud of blades. Oh, uh, the cloud of daggers that you got uh, from your doll? Er, yes, cloud of daggers that I got from my, yes, fight with the, yeah. The fight with Sharon, yes. although you don't know that. But yeah, so right. she used that spell on you to knock you down, and your your doll stole it. So now now Blake is a tiny lady of pain. <laughs> it's very tiny. So tiny. Um, okay, so that's going to be... Uh, I'm going to center it on uh, the current position of uh, patience. And... Stab him! Uh, uh, 19 damage. All right, yeah. So Blake starts off uh, just spinning blades through the the angel made of light. It's a pretty good start. Uh, and Lynette, it's your turn. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to cast locate creature in the hopes of uh, tracking down where in these treasure piles we gotta we gotta be doing our attacks. Gotta try and find one of them. Describe or name a creature that is familiar to you. Uh, li little ball of light creature. What we saw go into the treasure. 
that that I've described it. Uh, you okay? The closest example of that creature you described is Charity, and you found it in uh, the third pile. Okay, and I think that's used up my action, but I will tell the rest of the party, hey, one of them's in there. Yay! Uh, I send Gustav to just go squawking at that pile. All right, so Charity is the the least dangerous one. That is, you know where that one is now, though. So, King, it's your turn. Okay. Uh, Can I do a perception check to see if I notice any of, like, the glowing light poking out of any of the treasure piles um you can i'm gonna tell you the dc is very high because this is their whole thing is hiding so be pretty dumb if their butts are sticking out (laughs) Uh, i got a 10 no that's not gonna do it okay well i tried go go hit go hit the terrible one we know where to find uh all right uh 17 for the uh treasure pile Yep, 17 hits, charity inside the pile. Oh, no, sorry, I meant I was attacking a random pile. Oh, not not going for charity. Nah, char- charity's, like, the one I care the least about. Yeah, charity, to your knowledge, doesn't do very much. Uh, the humility is the one that's going to shrink you all, so your attacks do zero damage, and you take infinity when you get stepped on. So that's the dangerous one. Mm. Uh, se- 17 is not a hit, unfortunately. Okay, oh, well, I tried. <laughs> that's what king says <laughs> uh we're back to patience who is going to uh i guess stab a net because you've uncovered with well magic. first uh patience is gonna take 8d4 damage oh again. no it's so much damage please no a 23 no okay damn blake are you gonna solo this <laughs> i doubt <laughs> thank it. you <laughs> we love you so uh patience is going to attack lynette Lynette, that is going to be 20, 19, and 19. Uh, those are gonna hit, I think. Remember, everyone has an, a two penalty to AC because of the aura of slow. Yeah, those, those are going to hit. All right, 33 damage. That is an amount of damage I've taken. Whew. It is. Lynette and Cordelia, Cordelia have been badly stabbed. Cord- Cordelia, it's your turn. All right, I am going to... Cast Eldritch Blast on the pile that I know somebody is in there just to get them out of the way. Now, Eldritch Blast is actually several different blasts. It's three. Uh-huh. Uh, 18, 28, 21. Yep, those all hit, actually. That's math. 7, 7, 14, 16. 16! Damage. Uh, so Cordelia, you blast the treasure pile that's concealing charity. Um, but you, while you uncover and damage that lantern, you have not destroyed it. Although, as it's uncovered, and you send like a, a cascade of treasure flying around this mountaintop, you notice there's like what could only be described as like purple blood coming off of this lantern. Huh. It's made out of light, so it's not actually bleeding, but it's some kind of purple energy, purple magic. Purple again. That was very suspicious. Uh, Blake, it's your turn. Okay. Um, yeah, I guess I probably could have spent the time figuring out a plan. <laughs> I'm going to cry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to hear it in Austin's voice. I'm going to leave this in so the audience can get a taste of what happens every round. This is a particularly bad example, but it's it's always like this. <laughs> uh yeah i'm just yeah blake's gonna uh keep focusing on uh on dealing with patients uh while they look for the other targets uh let's just use a fireball all right you can catch uh patience and three uh treasure piles with uh, with a 20 foot radius cool well let's do that that sounds like super fun um all right i actually advantage because diligence makes patience much faster uh 20 get fucked that's gonna succeed okay uh as long as diligence is alive patience is very hard to hit and is going to stab like a truck so it's 12 damage um and then whatever in the the piles if there's any yeah so i'm gonna roll d23 times here uh, 16, 18, and 19, none of those hit my piles. Okay. So, Lynette, it's your turn. 
Uh, hmm. Okay, Lynette's gonna deliberately fly away from Charity to some of the other treasure piles and use Locate Creature again, trying to find another one of those. I'm gonna roll d4. Humility is going to be evens. Diligence is gonna be odds. That's odd, so you find Diligence, the one who's making patience very fast. Okay, well, we know where that one is now, team. Do some hits. Oh, we do. So the only uh, lantern that's still in hiding is Humility, and who I remind you is shrinking you every round, which means uh, your damage is going down. I'm doing math behind it to make your damage less, and the, uh, Patience's damage is going to keep going up. Oh, lordy. Yeah, we got to find that as well. Sorry, I'm finding the sucky ones. Well, I mean, Lynette's the only one who's found anybody just so far, so you should all be thanking her. <laughs> yeah, and Diligence is a good one to find. Yeah. All right, I'm going to rush down Diligence. So, 21, uh, does that hit? Hits. All right. Yep. Uh, 11 damage. All right, so Charity and Diligence are both injured but not dead, and it's back to Patience's turn. So, I mean, Patience is really vibing on this because he's winning. And so he's just like, yes, yes, your wickedness ends. And just stabbing the shit out of, uh, let's say, Lynette, because you keep revealing everybody. Stop it. Oh, me? Fuck. 22 is the only one that's going to hit there, huh? Yep, 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 yep. Um, very lucky. Uh, 11 damage for Lynette. Lynette's in trouble. Uh... Yeah. I would rather not get hit again. Cordelia, it's your turn. Well, there's a lot of things happening, one of which is my lady is being stabbled. Lynette's just gonna gonna look to you and go, I found them. Kill the fuckers. Kill Cone the of cold. Fuckers. I think it's I think it's time for cold of cold. Co- cold of cone. Cold of cone. Cold of cold. Which which lantern would you want to destroy? Uh each creature within a sixty foot cone. Okay, I think you you can you could yeah. So Cordelia, you can get both if you could hit the right angle. I think, but you'll hit King too. Fuck. Because King moved into melee range with diligence. It's fine. Do it. Okay. Thank you for your blessing, Chris. I love you. <laughs> All right, here we go. Uh, nine. That's a failure. Oh, that sure is. Uh, Nineteen. Thirty-one. Yikes. All right, so that Cone of Cold kills Charity and Diligence and owns King. First of all, uh, Cordelia, feel free to describe, and then second of all, King, feel free to react, because this is a big move. My bad! It's just my girlfriend's getting murdered, and, you know, I can't... I mean, I really appreciate... I really appreciate it. It's, it's, It's always hot when you do murder. It's fine. I'm sorry, King. It's fine. Don't be mad. King is going to turn... In anger to Patience, and he's going to scream at Patience, What are you, a coward? Aren't I the one that you want? Damn. You have slain my kin, and for this, you will never find forgiveness. Not in this life or the next. Thank you, King. I'm very squishy with my, with, with my bird bones. Well, that's true. They're hollow. Blake, it's your turn. Uh, Patience is out of. Yeah, Patience is gone into a blood rage, and humility is still hiding, which is fair. That's humility's whole thing. That that is that is humility's whole thing. But I don't have um, I don't have a means of drawing humility out. So I think. Uh, also, I want to do cool damage things. So if any of you can work out how to. <laughs> How to find humility? That'd be great. Uh, yeah, it's not going to come from me, unfortunately. Uh, what can come from me, though, is uh, another um, cloud of daggers. All right. Just to oh, but he's in melee range with uh, Lynette. Yeah, but you could just drop it on this on his five by five. Yeah, that's true. All right. Yeah, so we'll do that. This one won't be as Strong as the last one, but um, it's going to be 44 damage, so 9 damage. Not great, but it does put a really uh, funny uh, end to that interaction where King is like, Face me, coward! And <laughs> and Patience is like, You killed my brother! And then suddenly he's just, Oh god, knives, knives, knives! <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good image. Uh, Lynette, it's your turn. 
Okay, let's try and locate this last one. Yeah, I would say you look uh, you look over at the treasure, like, which one could it be in? Also, the, the treasure looks much bigger. I'm like half the height I was when I walked up this mountain. Uh-oh. Uh, Ooh, that's that's no good, but it's fine. Where, 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 where that little glowy ball at? Where is the, where is the shiny? Uh, so you cast locate creature for th- a third time? Yeah, use use that that up. Yep, I think you turn around and you find humility in a pile right behind you. For the record, that was a seven. I was looking for a seven there. The numbers were three, seven, and thirteen. You said that like a game show host. You were like seven. <laughs> seven was actually the answer. We <laughs> Does were anybody for. have seven? <laughs> I don't know why. It doesn't fucking matter. But yeah, right. Lynette has found the last of uh, virtue, or I guess it's a lantern now. Patience and humility are both revealed, and it is King's turn. All right, so now that diligence is gone, uh, we're not limited to one action? No, diligence makes patience faster. Patience makes you slower. Okay. Um, And humility's making us small. Are we still taking... Eh, you know what, fuck it. I'm just going to... uh, I'm going to use second wind to regain uh, 20 hit points. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'm just going to put up my dukes. Like, I'm like, all right, come at me, whore. All right, it goes back to NPC's turn, which means the shrinking continues. And at this point, when Patience goes to fight you, King, uh, the size difference is terrifying. You're coming up to, like, waste. Uh, I well, should Patience say Patience is taking 11 points of damage first. All right, so uh, Patience pushes through the daggers. 29 and 25 are the two. Those will hit. Um, it's not good to be small around patience. Uh, 21 actually could have rolled better, frankly. Okie dokie. Yep. Patience stabs King. Uh, King, you're too slow to react, but the, the doesn't without. Who says I was trying to dodge? Oh, damn. I was going to say without diligence providing a speed boost, uh, you can see patience's attacks more clearly and they're not as frightening now. Cordelia, it's your turn. If I were to put these two virtues into another 60-foot cone, is King still in there? Yeah, he's in melee range. Damn it. Okay, fine. I'll do something else. I've already established you could do as you will. Oh, okay, let's do another cone of cold then. Oh, Lord. Okay. Teamwork makes the dream work. 15, now that's going to fail. It sure is, buddy. Uh, 25. 36. Tequila. Okay. okay, so Cordelia killed all three lanterns, huh? Oh my god! <laughs> I did it! Hat trick! I mean, you did hit King twice. <laughs> <laughs> I will make up for that by saving you as author. Um, as soon as humility uh, is frozen to death, it falls out of the air and shatters on top of the mountain. All of you return to size uh, immediately. Just whoop! And you're... Right back to normal. You double in, in height, and um, sup, tiny. Yeah, patience is not happy about that. That was the kind of the thing he was counting on to win this fight. Can so. we do an all-out attack like Persona? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? I think at this point it's clear that uh, the fight is over. So I think for role-playing reasons, yeah, patience uh, is going to float up off the battlefield and say, even if you defeat us. The conduit of revenge is indomitable. Nobody cares. <laughs> <laughs> revenge might be, but you're not. Oh, good barn, sweetie. Blake's gonna thorn whip its ankle and drag it down. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, so you use someone Callie's thorn whip. Yeah, this is just role play now. So you pull the you pull patience out of the sky. What's going to happen now? So this is somebody who you killed their boss and then you killed a bunch of their siblings. They're f- absolutely furious at you and kind of bleeding purple stuff here. Uh what do you do? Do we inquire about the purple stuff before we murder? You had your chance and I want to slice it straight through. Uh well that answers that. <laughs> <laughs> So Lynette says, ah, perfect opportunity to gather intel, and King just decapitates the angel. I mean, that's pretty metal, though. I'd like to think he tries to do the you're already dead thing, but he doesn't know Japanese, so it just becomes a bunch of sounds, and he thinks that's how it goes. (laughs) It 
He's it? like, oh, do a double do. And then they just explode. Yeah, you try to say, the, you're already dead, but you accidentally say, like, <laughs> 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 And then looks around, looks around the group and your entire lack of information gathering and just goes, sweetie, is this how you've been doing this this whole time? Yes. I kill everyone I want to kill, which is everyone. I mean, you do look cute doing it, but you sh- you should really ask them questions and then do the murder. But did you hear them talking? It was so annoying. They're stupid. It, okay, it was so annoying. Yeah. You do have me there. I mean, then like the stole daughter. I understand. Can't, you just can't take a man's daughter. That's kidnapping, and it's that's illegal. <laughs> that that is illegal. You know. <laughs> that's not okay. I mean, that's just it's just wrong when it comes right down to it. Even I don't kidnap. Uh, is that you rolling hit dice there, King? Yes. Oh, that's a good yes. idea. Oh, oh, can I do that? Can we take like a little nap in a cave? Uh, I'm actually, I'm, I'm, I'm actually gonna roll all of my hit dice. Everybody, heal up here on top of this mountaintop because you've climbed the whole mountain. Now you're at the summit of the silver. Oh lordy. Heaven. Above you is the second mountain, the golden heaven. So. We now don't have the opportunity to ask about this, but what's everyone's theory on the purple the purple goo? Uh slard related. Well, yeah, slard related. For but sure like, it's the slard, I mean Is is this like the slard is, you know, vampire turning them, or you know, they were made of slard goo or something? Well, no, it's it's revenge, right? Conduit of revenge, the gods getting revenge for having been killed, the you know, the the angels getting revenge on us it all tracks yeah is this is this sort of is this sort of revenge can give them extra power if they are doing a revenge or something why does revenge get to be purple purple is my thing purple is your thing it is a very good color on you i mean it's technically indigo but it's it's purple we all know it so anyone else you guys have racked up a, a grudge against you that we might have to face but in purple form um Mm, uh, probably. Yeah. I don't remember who or why, but I mean... See, this is why I tell you to keep a grudge calendar. I don't care, though. Yeah, but it makes it easier to know who might be worth killing later if you've got a list of who's gonna come kill ya. Well, I know, because they'll come try to kill me and then I kill them then, because they're fools. Preparation always makes it easier. This is why you're the organized one, and I'm... Just just, just tell me every time you rack up a grudge, I'll do the bookkeeping for you. Okay. Not to self. Tell Lynette. Oh, King might have a grudge later. I did hit him with the corner gold boys. It's fine. I'm used to getting hurt. That was more depressing than I meant it to be. No, but it's very relatable. For characters in the D and D podcast, they take getting into D and D fights very personally. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hey, hey, we we do a bunch of murders, but someone someone hurt us. Oh no! This uh, the the disrespect to stab me in my tube after how many times in the mo- not in your recent tube. history in my tube. King, uh, after recovering, is going to take. Uh, Blake aside, real quick. Mm, yeah. <laughs> What's up? Can you say, hey, Blake, I need to ask a favor of you. So, sure, buddy. What, what you need? So, this is kind of a big one, but, um, so, if something happens to me during all of this, I need you to make sure you get Lime back to Lloyd. Right. Yeah, sure. L- look, nothing's gonna happen. You're the... Well, I mean, you are hand short, and that was a lot harder than it probably would have been. Um, you're gonna be fu- We're all coming back from this. Don't worry about it. Um, I've already died twice. Right, well, I mean, you know, Lynette and Cordelia might have to carry you, but we will bring you back. We're not going to leave you dead out there. 
I'm just saying, if it happens, can you make sure she gets to Lloyd, please? Yeah, I'll, I'll make sure she gets to Lloyd. Thanks, buddy. And King is going to give Blake a very big hug. Oh, oh that's gay. <laughs> that's, that's, that's good gay. I know. It's great. How does Blake have the most stable friendships? What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, can I just say, my favorite moments of every season of Dice Funk uh, recently have been when Comrade's characters get into big hugs. <laughs> He does this shit on purpose so he makes deliberately unlikable characters so when their shell cracks it's really sweet. Fuck you, Conrad. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a there's a reason there's a reason I have I have Drag and Liam Moira having a hug on my arm. Don't don't worry, don't worry. Next season Oh shush. It's already cracked and oozing you. out everywhere. Oh yeah, don't worry, it's not just gonna be hugs. <laughs> there's gonna be there's gonna be a there's gonna be a lot, <laughs> gonna be a lot of hugs. Going. The <laughs> only person who has successfully stayed us off is Chris. <laughs> we're like Chris please let us love you and he's like no <laughs> can't open this heart oh, there's too many holes oh my god save him <laughs> um, so let's check in on Nifix just for a little bit uh, Nifix in Hermes there are now two dozen bounty hunters uh, you could no clip and get away but Sharon cannot so Nifix is gonna start by trying to create some kind of uh, wall to obscure where uh, where the two of us are. So I'm gonna say there's some balloons or something around the uh, around the party, uh, which Nifix is gonna c- duplicate in order to basically just obscure our location. It's not gonna be a very permanent. Uh, wall of any kind. It's not going to stop any approach, but it gives us a second to maybe uh, get the drop on them. So wait, you you poke your head out of the room, you see some balloons in the disco, and you start flooding the dance floor with balloons? Exactly! It's at the very least going to cause a lot of confusion and chaos in that room. Yeah, I mean, from their perspective, it is very strange. Yeah, it it's not the weirdest thing that could have it happen in a in a in a rave. <laughs> there's just yeah. a oh oh shit, someone opened the, the ceiling and there's balloons everywhere, I guess. Okay, yeah, I mean they all look at each other and the ones who have like spells start, you know, preparing and the people who have bows put arrows on them. In in the ensuing chaos of not being able to quite see what's going on, um I think Nifix is gonna try and send through the room like a uh Oh, what's a what's a good thing to spawn in? Uh, some something something like a gorilla that can sort of knock and bowl them all over uh, without necessarily um, having to start a fatal fight in a room full of people who are just there to party. They're gonna get knocked down, but they'll be all right. They'll get back up again. You're never gonna keep them down. Yeah, I think Sharon says like, I can't unleash my full power in there with all the all the partiers. Is nobody so, else going to acknowledge the Tremble Lombo reference? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I try to not acknowledge the Tremble Lombo whenever <laughs> possible. Got him. Uh, uh, so, um, so Nifix, you just, first you make a bunch of balloons, then you send in a gorilla. Yeah, in the hopes of, of causing some, some major confusion and potentially knocking some people down to uh, start creating a path out of here. Do you play tub something? Yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, I do really like the fucking Guardians of the Galaxy energy of the <laughs> gorilla beating up mercenaries to Chumbawamba's tub something. <laughs> it's extremely good. But yeah. I think Sharon just looks at you and says, Honey, I don't know this is a permanent solution to our problem. <laughs> <laughs> the gorilla is always the answer. <laughs> permanent solution? No. Fun solution? Yes. <laughs> Uh, I think like Sharon just like pats you on the back and just walks out and just with her scythe. Sharon just approaches the mercenaries who are like like why is there a gorilla here? <laughs> she just gra- like co- walks up to the closest one and says, "Honey, this is my establishment, and I'm gonna have to uh, refuse you service tonight." And then she grabs him uh, by the back of the head and slams his face through the scythe onto her bar. Well, that's pretty cool. Um. Yeah, N- Nifix, Nifix is going to cast Destructive Wave, but she's going to do so ominously, sort of holding it as it builds up in the hand, and wave, try, trying to avoid hitting any partiers with it, trying to get close enough to just sort of 
blast them back into the wall. Yeah, destructive wave is an AOE, but you actually do get to pick the targets. And since there's only yeah. there's tw- there's like two dozen mercenaries, but they are one D and D enemy, which is group of mercenaries, group of bounty okay. hunters. Let's hit them with that big wave. Uh, twenty one. They succeed. Uh, eight thunder damage and six radiant damage. Yeah, that's not great damage, but you blast some of them back who are, be, you know, tussling with the gorilla. And obviously the people who came here to dance and drink and do drugs are running out because this is messed up. They just saw a dude get his head split in half by a scythe and there's a gorilla who's eating a man. Um, and there's just so many balloons. I think maybe that's the most upsetting <laughs> part is all the balloons. <laughs> they're just just so- a party! Oh no, they're it's, trying to find the exits and they're like, oh no, I can't see them. There's balloons everywhere. This is terrible. Uh, so the bounty hunters are going to try to rush forward to grab Nifix. Uh, obviously, Sharon throws up a cloud of daggers they have to run through and skin themselves to approach you. What do you do? Uh, no clip, obviously. Oh, that's embarrassing. So they run through that cloud of daggers for nothing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, don't they feel stupid? All their skin is gone and you're safe. <laughs> <laughs> what is today's episode? Yeah, it's pretty good. Uh, so Sharon's just summoning knives, 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 <laughs> and she's hiding them behind your balloons. Um, and uh, just, oh just like backstepping away, going like playing keep away. Like, oh, oh, did oh, did you not reach me? Yet? Oh, I'm I'm over here now. Yeah, I mean Sharon is very strong. It took uh, two of the deadliest people in the multiverse to take her in a in a. Uh, an ambush to beat her and it was you know close if if um if anastasia wasn't there and friendly to blake because of his choices then he would have died and then cordelia probably would have died after so she's not to she's not to be fucked with and i i feel like nifix is back stepping away is a decent decent level of of, of distraction don't pay attention to the person flaying your skin <laughs> yeah sharon sharon says uh, Sugar, you got anything uh, a little deadlier than a, a gorilla? He's he's very big, but uh, we need a, something a little bit more lethal. Giant uh, hedgehog. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we got to look for mealworms, that would be awesome. But I, right now, I want to kill as many people as possible as quickly as They're possible. They're so angry. What are you talking about? They're very angry. Give me a second. I need to find. I need to find something that is. Giant Komodo dragon, double big. That, that is that is deadly, but not so big or so heavy that it's going to ruin the boat we're in. Um, uh, that's true. Escape boat. Oh, um, if we've got enough room in here, giant spider. A giant spider's always fun. I mean, yeah, it's pretty fun. <laughs> so <laughs> let's let's spawn out the uh, the gorilla for a giant spider. Yeah, so you un no clip because you have to get you have to make yourself vulnerable to do anything else. Yeah. Um, and you send the gorilla away and bring in a giant spider. Um, and that's going to be extremely venomous and large and deadly, and that's helpful. And Sharon and says, good for good for keeping people stuck in one place as well. Uh, Sharon says, much better, sweetie. Um. Uh, additionally, before finishing the turn, Nifix is going to start uh, blood bending to hold people in place as well. Oh, that's good. Yeah. So somebody rushes at her. You stop them with blood bending, and then Sharon does uh, a move. She t- from the scythe uh, in the crotch area, and then whoosh, up pulls it out through the top of the head. You're real good at this killing thing. <laughs> I had a lot of practice. I mean, you you make it look easy. <laughs> well, the whole job of the Lady of Pain is to inspire fear in the populace to maintain neutrality. I mean. I, s- I see how you how you did it. <laughs> now I have top thumping stuck in my head. Yeah, I mean, if we could afford the rights, I'd be playing through this entire scene. Obviously, find a meaty. Oh my god! Is is it bad that I'm now suddenly realizing that because of jokes I made, there are going to be people in this campaign who die to the song top thumping? <laughs> I'm kinda, I shouldn't laugh, but. <laughs> If I had a choice, that would be one of my songs to die to. Seriously, like that all-star would be a good one to die on. <laughs> if you're listening to Chumbawumbo and you die, you go straight to hell. <laughs> Those are the rules. That's in the Bible. No, anymore. We're getting we're getting get getting rid of hell. You've clearly made mistakes. I mean Where'd you go now? There's no hell. Where are you gonna go now when you die listening to Chumbawumba? <laughs> you're already there. <laughs> <laughs> this is the bad place. <laughs> all right nifix you have you have any anything else you want to bust out killing people 
Uh, if we've if we've got any of them that happen to be near like a big speaker stack or something, just start multiplying speakers to uh, to <laughs> topple over and start crushing some of them. And the, that chorus that makes thump thump thumping louder and louder and louder. Exactly. <laughs> doubling the speakers. <laughs> Imagine I get knocked down. And it's but just I get up again. Get up again. Get up down. I get knocked I'm, down. <laughs> do something we, and we can piss the night away. We we can play it. All we have to do is just sing it loudly and unintelligibly. Then we get around the copy. I used to play that song on repeat in my boombox when I was little because we had the CD for some reason and that was the only song I cared about. I, I, I feel the need to say the correct way to listen to this episode is put on your own copy of that song at home while you listen. It's either that or in post. I'm going to have to keep adding more tracks of it as you double the speakers and make them louder and louder and louder and more and more numerous until that's all anyone can hear. Now you're playing with power. I think that's a good place for us to leave that scene. <laughs> Just murder by Chumbawamba. <laughs> murder by Chumbawamba is a great... Put that on my tombstone, honestly. <laughs> okay, so that's where we. <laughs> I can't breathe. I'm gonna die. I'm gonna You're die. not even smoking weed. What's your problem? Is this what you wanted from me, Austin? I don't know anymore. <laughs> um. All right. So the Furies are on top of the Silver Mountain. Up ahead is the Golden Mountain. What do you do? Uh, do we have to? Can we just skip to like the platinum mountain? Gold is my least favorite metal. One of them is the platinum mountain. I don't know if you googled it, but that is one of them. Yeah. <laughs> no, I just was guessing. Yeah, it is. Sorry. <laughs> oh shit! I accidentally guessed important things. Yay! No, every that's the thing. People keep asking questions about stuff in this. Everything in this season is Googleable. It's you can Listen, cheat a lot. I'm gonna go back to what I said earlier. Uh, thick skull, no thought. Yeah. I don't even know if that's like a meme. That's just like an image you found. No one in the audience knows it. I don't. I feel like people will understand. Uh, so bridging uh, the silver and gold heavens, there is uh, just like oh, another cloud bank. That's how you get onto these mountains. So if you want to climb up here, it's it's open to you. I'm gonna fly because I can fly. I mean, Lynette's gonna fly with you. Sorry, chumps. Sorry, chumps. If we both do it, do you think that Lynette and Cordelia together could carry Blake? <laughs> like we each take an arm. I guess I'll climb up alone then. Well, that's, that's the thing is I can't I can't figure out like I can like a perpetual rain cloud float over my head <laughs> as I'm climbing up. I don't think we can actually do it. You're too big. I'm so sorry. You're too dummy thick. We need no. El- Lynette's going to shout down. We need someone on the ground in case there's a better vantage point from there. She's lying. We're just very weak. I saw the meme. The high ground's where you want to be. And I'm just... I'm, look at my arms, much like my body. They are noodles. You're, you're already... You're very tall, King. You've, you've got the high ground. I am completely powerless in any of this. Well... <laughs> you're just like, how... <laughs> So we climb the mountain. Blake's little leggies are kicking <laughs> as he's carried off by giant bird women. <laughs> we're not that that we're not that high above King. We're gonna hang back a little bit to not be rude. We're, we're flying literally just enough so that uh, just so that Blake's head can be at King's head height. <laughs> yeah, he's just like a couple feet off the ground. <laughs> he's dragging his feet in the snow. <laughs> can i get survival checks please <laughs> is this because we're too funny yeah that's it <laughs> can we survive the jokes i'm honestly still thinking about chumbawamba <laughs> i get knocked out. you should listen to some of their early stuff i hear it's very punk <laughs> that's a nine uh, lynette botched oh no are you gonna drop blake uh blake got an eight jesus christ <laughs> can't you do anything right <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, so the party not only fails, but they botch. Um, oh, no. 
Yeah, this is pretty rough. So as you enter the golden heaven, you, you first you climb up under these clouds and you cross the clouds. Um, the the battle of you know the the faction war hasn't quite reached here yet, so you're you're pretty alone. You see you know angels flying in the distance; they're going down to join the fray. But you just have this moment to yourself, and there are clues scattered all around, but you don't see any of them <laughs> because you fail. Um, well, I wish there were some clues right now. <laughs> Exactly. I really wish I knew some stuff about some things. And on the DVD, you can pause, and in the in the background, there's all these clues that explicitly spell out where lime is, <laughs> and you just keep walking. Oh, weird! Look at all these limes in the snow. Wonder how those got here. Nobody knows. Also, does Cor- Cordelia think clouds are snow? <laughs> oh yeah, we're in clouds. I don't know why it was. Snow. <laughs> It is white and it is fluffy, though, but they're, they're fluffy and white and soft. Because you said mountain, and whenever I think of mountain, I think of snow, because I live in Florida, we have neither of those things. Uh, so actually, I should describe the the golden heaven. This mountain is, I mean, it's... I'd prefer if you didn't. Okay. <laughs> Are there any golden geese? No, so it's not named after gold and mineral. Uh, it's named because this whole mountain is, uh, s- like, swaddled in a golden glow. Like, Ugh. it's... It's glo- it's like actually luminescent, um, but the the mountain is otherwise fairly normal. It has um a, like verdant greenery. It's like very lush and pastoral. But the main feature of this layer of the heaven are all the shrines. Um, rather than a like cathedrals to gods, the golden heaven uh, uh, features shrines to saints and heroes. Um, just all across the landscape. Uh, some. Uh, fairly big and elaborate, but most like tasteful and small, just where people will come and pray and leave offerings. And it's like all of the great heroes and saints throughout history. Nerds! It's a whole, <laughs> it's a whole field of nerds! All, all of the beloved martyrs. <laughs> Cordelia just like walks over their graves, just like, fuck you, you suck. <laughs> like, knock over the vase with like one flower in it. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, yeah. I think Nifix might actually be the good guy. No shit! <laughs> <laughs> Why is that? Everybody knows Cordelia's terrible. You all wanted villain season, everyone. Wow, did you know that there were so many nerds? I didn't. Now I know. <laughs> so that's where you find yourself. You're on the Golden Mountain, and there's just uh, shrines all around you. That one's a nerd. That one's a nerd. That one was definitely a nerd. How about an investigation check? Oh, I would like to investigate how much of a nerd they were. Fourteen? Thirteen! Uh, twenty-six investigation. Holy shit. Wow, that is very good. Wow, my girlfriend is so good at investigation. I rolled a two. I was looking for 15, you only got one pass, so the party doesn't uh, pass. So, rather than give you... Are you telling me I got a 26 and we didn't pass? That's... Oh. Well, you got a 26. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, group group rolls are different. You're dragging me down, team. Yeah. I know it. Yeah, Lynette, you like, a confidence that the party is not comfortable with, like, trying to interrogate <laughs> people and look for clues and stuff, and they're just like, chop heads, chop heads, chop yeah, heads. Yeah, I don't know, you just, you kill them, and then you don't have to worry about it anymore, because they're dead. Boom. Great. Uh, so you're wandering amongst these shrines to saints and heroes. Uh, before I introduce a complication for failing that role, does anybody have any uh, spells or abilities they would like to attempt? Is there anyone I recognize? I want to make a history check. Oh, I love a history check. Oh, that's a, that's another good idea. I have good that. 15. 19. Oh, an 11. That's not horrendous. Wow. I saw that one in the Baby Einstein book. <laughs> uh, 19. All right, yep. Yeah. So the, the party passes a history check. So you don't see the clues and you don't see um the threat. So we don't see the clues. So, so, hey, so we don't we don't see the sides. We don't see the clues. But we did find Jim Morrison's grave. And why the fuck is there a shrine to Jim Morrison here? I mean, of all the fucking people, isn't it in France? No, it's, yes, his grave's in France. I meant a shrine, but oh. I misspoke. There's a shrine to Jim Morrison here. <laughs> what? It would be pretty wild if he was in heaven too. You're stoned, and your mind went to Jim Morrison. Unbelievable. <laughs> With a success on a history roll uh, to find something familiar, I think you find a shrine to the paladin uh, Hawklight. Ah! 
Um, this shrine is adorned with imagery of griffins. It doesn't actually picture this person, but the there it's like a, a small, tasteful shrine with like a statue of a griffin on top. There's some um, imagery of like uh, a hydra and some other stuff because this is a season three thing. Oh, okay. I sorry, Hawkelite. I thought it was like a metal band. <laughs> Just like a metal band. Hawkelite. Right. <laughs> I think actually, what you find here is people come and they leave uh, chess pieces at the shrine, and some uh. of them seem maybe valuable or magical in some way. Um, that that's a thing that I can give you about this particular shrine. Oh, can we take the chess pieces then? Yeah, if you want to rob the shrine, cool. <laughs> I love robbery and fraud. These ones probably aren't cursed. <laughs> can we roll insight to see if they're cursed? No, that's a spell. It's called identify. Let me roll insight on the chessboard. It's secrets. I must know them. Let's recap. A lot just happened. So first we rolled to find the clues to Lyme. You failed. Then you rolled to find... Uh, then you rolled to identify... The threat in the immediate area, and you failed. So both of those things are bad, and we'll get to them in a second. The thing you succeeded on is you found a magic chess piece. Cool! Yay! All right, let's blow it up. Uh, maybe roll Arcana. Okay. All right. Austin, that. stop making me roll things that require intelligence. <laughs> 29. Jeebus. Four. 24. Uh, so the party passes uh, 29 and 24 is incredible. Uh, so these he- people bring chess pieces to this uh, shrine to this paladin and they are imbued with a uh, holy magic. And I'm going to say that you find a, a knight that has a healing spell in it. Um, oh, Jesus. Thank God. I'll take it. Don't leave it with me. It'll break. Yeah. Yeah. That goes to King. <laughs> okay. So you didn't. F- okay. So now it's time to reveal the threat you missed. No oh, good. Yay, I love to be threatened. Uh, it was a small angry dog, and it's not going to pose an actual threat. It's just going to bark. No. This bitch again. That's my nightmares. That's what that is. It's, it's the Metatron. Uh, so crawling out behind one of the shrines is the Metatron, the Soku Shinbutsu. It's kind of a mummified a humanoid figure with long spindly wings, which have atrophied to almost look like spider legs. And it actually scuttles out behind the shrine on these, on these wings. The main difference between, Uh, yeah, that makes sense. This figure and the one you saw previously is this one is striped purple. It almost looks like the Metatron is put through a paper shredder, (laughs) which is basically what happened when King got his sword on him. Cut into ribbons, but then reconstructed with, like, purple glue. He's been, like, glued back together in strips. And surprise, surprise, he probably wants revenge. Yep. Um, so it scuttles out behind from behind the shrine. Um, I'm gonna say the shrine that was... Why not? You guys want to just go for maximum blasphemy? Do we want to just say it was, like, a shrine to the Virgin Mary? I think that's good imagery. She a virgin who can't drive? What? I guess she couldn't drive, yeah. Yeah, cars weren't invented, dog. <laughs> I was thinking about Clueless, okay? Roll, roll, roll initiative, you weirdo. <laughs> I'm allowed to think of an enjoyable 90s movies. Mm-hmm. With Alicia Silverstone. Ugh, seven. <laughs> what was that noise? Ugh. Oh, no! Four slash botch. We're getting our botches out of the way here, Lauren. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll be fine later. It'll be fine. All right. So the Metatron scuttles out from behind the shrine to the Virgin Mary on the Golden Mountain. And Lynette, you have time to react. What do you do? I'm going to cast Sacred Flame on this fucker. All right. uh, Lynette, you raise your Ankh that you got from the god Horus. And nothing happens. Uh-oh. Ah. Yeah, this is this is Lynette's first time facing this one, huh? Hmm. Yeah, I like that imagery. So it starts scuttling towards you. You raise the, the holy symbol and you're like, eat fire, bitch. And then nothing happens. King, it's your turn. Uh, So King will say like, yeah, I think he stops magic or something. Are you alive again? I heard there was a way cooler Metaltron. Go back to hell. 
<laughs> Why would the Metatron go to hell? Because he's a punk ass bitch. <laughs> um, actually, I think that this creature doesn't seem to really recognize that King is talking to it. All right, well, he's going to recognize me fucking ripping his ass apart. Uh, so 17, <laughs> so. 24, 16. Holy shit, tits. 18, 26, and 17. I couldn't keep track of all that. The The AC is 20, so do with that what you will. 29 damage. Nice. So King runs up and just hacks at the Metatron with his sword. Um, and the first thing you notice about this... Uh, move king is that you immediately feel like you're on fire and you take 12 damage from being that close to the metatron okie dokie uh it is now the metatron's turn and at this point it's completely vacant expression and non recognition of king yelling at him gives you the sense that this is an almost animal intelligence Oh, so he's just a little bit smarter than I am. <laughs> I'm gonna have I'm gonna have to trick this guy. <laughs> it kind of splays out its wings like a spider. I don't know if you're familiar with like jumping spiders. Ah, oh, get out of here! It's really it's kind of gross. It like kneels down and then springs up into the air and then slams down, sending out a purple wave of holy fire on all of you. Dexterity saving throw. Uh, seventeen. Seven. 17 is a success. Uh, eight. Everybody but King fails. Uh, 16 damage and eight to King as this purple fire rips through you. Oops. It could be worse. And you hear a voice. You're not sure where from. It's definitely not the Metatron. And it says, How many powerful sources of revenge have you left in your wake? They're weapons in my hands. Nobody cares. I mean, in in my defense, I don't think any of them want revenge on me. Smash a statue on that son of a bitch. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, I'm gonna pick. <laughs> I'm such a bitch. I'm gonna pick up the chess one, <laughs> the Hawklight one. That's so the statue of the Griffin on the on the shrine of Hawklight. Yep. Um, I think I'd like to wet, whip my tail around it like a little lasso. And then just, like, shot put it into his face. Okay, that's fun. Um, So I'm going to make a dexterity save. Eight, that fails. And then I'm going to roll. I'm just going to improv damage. Let's say... It feels like how much damage does that mean? I mean, it's a really heavy statue. Uh, 28 damage. Nerd! As you smash a statue of a griffin over his head. Uh, Blake, it's your turn. All right, so... uh... Blake's gonna move towards the nearest of these spindly ass legs. Uh huh. And he's gonna reach into his jacket and he's going to pull out the quarter staff that he's been carrying the entire campaign. I don't buy it. My my suspension of disbelief is destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> and he's gonna whack a leg. I think I find it much more believable you would grab something off a shrine here than suddenly have a quarter staff you forgot about. Yeah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it is on the inventory. I know that's because that's your standard wizard stuff. I'm just... Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> you goof! But uh, gra- he'll grab a like a, a stiff rod or something from one of <laughs> yeah. the shrines. Yeah, grab a stiff rod. <laughs> children, you're all children. <laughs> okay, so first of all, you're gonna take Penis. you're gonna take damage from getting close to the Metatron. That's fourteen, and then I guess I'll just roll. Uh, you grab a stiff rod from the shrine of Saint yeah. R- Rodimus. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I like that. What's your dexterity? Uh, or strength. I don't give a shit. Give me one of them. <laughs> uh, 14. Okay, so that's a plus two. Yeah. Tw- yeah I agree! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> you can't You can't stiff rod him to death. <laughs> yeah, we can. I don't even... I, I give up. Fuck this. I just want to break a leg, frankly. <laughs> Fuck this dumb game. <laughs> that's only four damage because you're not a fucking... Ninja, yeah. but I do like the idea that you just pick up a f- rod and you just snap one of these spindly spider legs, and he what did not see that coming from the little wizard. <laughs> um, yeah, I think at this vo- the voice comes again, and I, King, you recognize it as Pope taunting you, and says, 
I did not account for the wizard. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't underestimate him. Nobody ever sees the wizard coming. I'm sure one of us has rope, right? Oh, yeah, but I don't need that. I could just strangle. Oh, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I want to. I was just thinking we could wrap his leggies up. I mean, between Lynette and Cordelia, I feel like Lynette would have the rope. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Uh, here's the thing. She's got rope, but it's the good. That's the good rope. Tie up, tie up his leggies. We can't do a whole Shibari reference thing again. That was like an entire one shot. I was shot. just thinking like Star Wars. You, you, you bind the legs together and they if, fall. If you try and stop me doing a Shibari reference, I'll step it up. I'll be like, no, she gets some fucking handcuffs out of her handbag. <laughs> Well, to say suspension. <laughs> well, Annette beats the Metatron to death with a riding crop. End of season. <laughs> roll credits. <laughs> it's your turn, Lynette. <laughs> I now have to think of something that's not that to do. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, Lynette's going to try and do the opposite of uh, what Cordelia did. So rather than trying to throw a statue at, at this creature we got to fight, Throw the creature at a sharp, pointy bit on a statue. Oh, okay. How do you do that? Walk me through this. Um, I'm looking for something that's got, like, you know, maybe one of the statues is holding, like, a stone, like, sword or something in its hand. Um, and Lynette's intention is go go big human-sized raven and just sort of try and throw, <laughs> just try and grab and throw them in the direction of the pointy end. Okay, so when you grab onto the Metatron, you take 11 damage, yep. uh, and then you grab onto the Metatron with your talons. Let's do a strength contest. This is a mummy, so he's not particularly strong. Uh, that's good, because I'm not super strong. 12. 14, that'll do. That'll do. So, so yeah, paint me this picture. There's a mummy with uh, spider leg wings, and you grab him in, as a giant raven. Yeah, um... Yeah, so Lynette's going to grab him by the Shibari together uh, legs. <laughs> um, no, we haven't established Shibari. That's a different action. <laughs> shibari legs! Shibari legs! Can I Shibari as a bonus action? <laughs> <laughs> hey, please. That's a good, that's a merch. Can I Shibari as a bonus action is merch. Um, um, but I like this that Blake, you know, Blake cracks his leg with a rod and that to him being off balance is what allows you to pick him up as a raven and carry him off. And then Okay. You, you, so yeah, I'm gonna grab him by the legs that so I'll leave it to the audience to decide to decide whether they're shibari or not. Uh and just yeah. sort of swing around in a couple of circles and fling him onto the end of that uh statue blade. Yeah, so there's there's a statue of like a famous knight here holding his sword pointed at the sky, you know, and and like a t- like Tebow pointing to God, and you oh just, God, break that statue! <laughs> and you ram the Metatron down on the s- sword hard enough to crack the statue in half. Um, Perfect. Okay, so I'm gonna I, I'll roll damage here for flavor, but this old dead mummy doesn't have that much fight left in him. Uh, twelve damage. It could be better, uh, but I think at this point he's pinned like through the chest by this, this the statue. Hmm. And like squirming on the on it, like I mean, like entomologists do this thing where they they stick insects with pins, right? They're supposed to be dead. I'm not an entomologist, but that's my 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 image. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. So he's trapped. Yeah. So he he's like squirming on this thing and not fighting back anymore. And the voice rings out again, and it says, How many would you be willing to kill to get your daughter back? I'm going to kill everyone I need to to get back to Lyme and to talk to you. I've heard what you have to say. I'm not interested. I just want to see how far you'll go. If you want nothing to do with me, then I won't go after you. We can be separate our entire lives and never have to run into each other again. I take it you have no regrets, you on T? Uh, I regret that I haven't already killed you. You have 
That's what this is about. Like, so that I don't have to have this conversation again? So your only regret is you didn't kill me harder? Yes. I'm just being honest. I don't know what you people want from me. I'm, I'm an avowed <laughs> killer. Like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not, that's what I do. That is the basis of the scavenger hunt. You're looking for me now to get back Lime. Yep. I'll tell you where I am. Uh, but I don't know if I should believe you. You left the proof behind you. I'm in the astral plane. The space between spaces. Uh... Where the bodies of the gods were laid to rest. This is very dramatic. I hope you know that. Mm-hmm. Somebody has daddy issues. And it's uh, 13 me. on insight. Yep. I mean, you've seen the bodies of the gods that were, in, with, were purple. So it all checks out. But uh, Pope says... The astral is between all the planes. It envelops them and is therefore larger than every other plane put together. You could search it for 10,000 lifetimes and never find me. I, that sounds like you're chickening out. No. I just want to see if it's true that King would do anything for his family. You're a real asshole. You know that, right? <laughs> For King, it's to test if he's true to his word. For you, Cordelia, it's to hurt you like you hurt me. And any friends you bring along will suffer for you. Are you guys Are you guys cool with that? Lynette, Blake, do you oh, care? I mean, you get used to it after a while. If I, sorry. It comes to the package. Yeah, no, it's just, this whole thing is, are we, uh, where are we looking for you? Uh, I think it was the ast astral plane, more like the asshole plane, am I right? <laughs> I mean, I mean, hon, if you're, if you're going in, of course I'm coming with you, sure, whatevs. So, I, that's fine. I warned you, all the suffering that comes after this, you accepted willingly. Okay. And you need to be ready to accept the consequences that'll come of what you're doing. Yeah, what he said. You're not going to get dessert for a month, young man. And no TV ever again. I'm taking away Fortnite. You mean two weeks? <laughs> no, this is the new better game now. <laughs> this is the apex legend of our universe. <laughs> <laughs> All the power I have comes from what you've done to me. My revenge, which I pour into these vessels to send after you. If you hadn't hurt me, I wouldn't have this power. And what about the times I loved you? If you remember everything, then you should remember that time in the Astral Sea where we hugged. And you made promises you didn't keep. I tried to. I'm giving you a second chance to try harder. I'm going to do everything I can. It's a simple scavenger hunt. I have found suitable vessels for my revenge and poured my anger into them. One of them holds the key to my location. You hear that, team? Next time we get one of them near to death, we ask them questions before we kill. <laughs> okay, okay. Whatever you say, sweetie. If you're pouring all of your anger at it, it sounds like you must be pretty tired. We'll have to get you home for a nap then. <laughs> King, for you, this is a test to see how far you'd go and who you would drag into it. For Cordelia, I have found the greatest source of revenge in the horror you have left behind, and I have given it all of my power to exact its revenge upon you. That is the key to my location. Okay. Well, you know. You don't have any, like, ex-boyfriends, ex-girlfriends, ex-other uh, possible... I don't know. I, I don't. I don't know. Is it the nun? Maybe it's the nun. Remember when you killed the big fly lady? 
Or that. The nun or Jean. What was it before you said? The grudge calendar? <laughs> See, this would all be fine if you kept a grudge calendar. It's fine. I live, I become God, I die, I die, and it's... I died already, like, three times. It's fine. Well, I'll be waiting for you here. I still have a lot of gods to choose from. Like a punk-ass bitch! I really, I swore there were only, like, seven, aren't there? <laughs> They're like the Power Rangers, right? <laughs> Pink, red, green, yellow. And yeah, there's a blue one, a green one, a red one, and we just killed, like, the yellow one, I think. Oh, that, that was... Was that the yellow one? I don't remember the yellow one. The one that shot lightning? I didn't think the yellow one had so many legs. Hurry up, King. Time is ticking. And lime would make such a great slod. I mean, lime would make a really good slod. She probably I'm would, not... yeah. But also, lime would be a great anything. I just want to karate chop this guy in the throat. She excels at everything she tries. <laughs> Um, at that, the voice cuts out, and you hear a thump. Maybe I should be the conduit of pride. Pride in my daughter! <laughs> um, uh, like a magical uh, item that was projecting his voice falls over from where it was hiding behind the shrine, where you could have found it if you hadn't failed the investigation roll. Can I stab it? Yes. And immediately feel like I've st- solved the mission. Yep. All right, so the question All is... All right, honey, you can come out now. <laughs> So the question is, where is the greatest source of revenge in the multiverse that has it out for the Furies? Because that is where Pope has hid the key to his location. There's a lot of different options here. You've made a lot of enemies. Yeah. There's all the factions we didn't choose to help who probably hate us. Uh Uh-huh. That's what this is about. Yeah, going through the Rolodex. Kato probably isn't a super big fan of us because we keep ruining Maybe things. Maybe he should have hired somebody else. Uh, you know what he was Scar's doing. cool with us. I don't think it's Scar. Cross <laughs> Scar off the list. Uh, Anastasia's not that mad. She's annoyed, but she's not that mad. No, she saved Blake's life. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, oh, is it Lancelot? I don't know. Tell me what you what, where you're going to check first so I can make it at the adventure next week. I mean, my mind says the Aethar. Yeah. Just because that seems like a pretty huge part of all uh, this. God, honestly, who gets mad more than Lancelot? I mean, we've killed so many people. We didn't even kill Lancelot, and he's like, hates us more than anything in the world. We, he doesn't, like, he's just like, you didn't choose the right side. I will slit your throats. Well, we did the boss rush through all the early enemies, so my mind's leaning towards either Lancelot or, God forbid, Jean's back in hell and really angry I at s- us. I bet it is. Austin is punishing me with more maggots. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do we want to go to Lancelot or do we want to go to the Abyss? It seems like the Abyss is the place. I feel like the Abyss is I the, mean, yeah. So, not for nothing, can't we go to Lancelot and ask for him to find Lime since she's lost? Um... You can by yourself. Can you convince <laughs> you Lancelot can. to help? I could go. Blake Blake could go. Has he seen you at the Believers though? He knows you helped me and he said he wants to kill me. I'm just saying. So it sounds like you want to go to uh, Aethar headquarters in the Shattered Temple next episode and see where that leads. Yes, I would love to go to the Shattered Temple. Uh... King, constitution saving throw. To end the episode, let's see how your slotty, your slot infection has progressed. Oh, I crit failed. Even with the plus eight. Woo! Oh, dear. Well, that's more of a cliffhanger than I thought it was. Everyone's like, oh, Austin, he loves his cliffhangers. I didn't make him botch. I didn't do this. He did this. Look what you made me do, Chris. <laughs> you know what's ironic? If I had taken the extra level, I got would have gotten an extra use of Indomitable, and I could have re-rolled it. <laughs> All right, so the last image of the episode, King uh, Chris destroys the magic projector where Pope's voice was coming out and says, like, I did it, and then immediately grasps his stomach and falls onto the ground. So you need a new character sheet by next week then, Austin?
February 2020. February. What did I say? You said, no, you said it normal. I'm just being stupid. Bernie 2020. Don't get my hopes up. Listen, I have to live for something. Otherwise, what do I have? A D&D podcast and a bunch of dog pictures. I was literally going to say dog pictures. <laughs> there's nothing else that I'm living for. Okay, we got to get to the credits. Executive producers for February 2020. I forgot my names list. Where'd it go? How'd you lose it? Joseph Tumbrello is the first one. I'm pretty sure the next one is x Dillers, but hold on. It sure is. Oh my god, I have such a good memory. The Walt Disney Company. Is that real? I mean, obviously <laughs> not. <laughs> okay, so what did do it? You're so gullible. <laughs> I'm so gullible. What the fuck, man? I used to get checks from the Walt Disney Company, though, because they owned... Uh, blip tv or they owned maker which owned blip and i worked for blip so i I have gotten disney checks before it's not weird okay (laughs) she doesn't care i don't care brent still every episode of dice funk goatly devon conduit of evolution evolution john madera conduit of caramel lattes rob jakin ah (laughs) Spider <laughs> Rob Rob Nightkin. Ah! Paul Mullen. Inspired by all these P and A. P. 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 Inspired by all of these PhD patrons, I'm getting a degree in what the heck. That's, there's worse reasons to go back to school. Yeah. Than I heard people on a podcast doing it. R.I.P. Chip, human fighter and pal of Hark and Caleb, eaten by an ank egg. What's that? It's like a big D and D insect. Ugh, don't like it anymore. Tashira Kuro, who's not a bug, because we're gonna stop talking about. Oh, I skipped Christman. Christman stealing Cupid's bow so the people can love me again. That seems like an abuse of your power. Toshira Kuro fighting the New Year, the New Year's new me for dominance. <laughs> Andrew Grothen. Belated birthday, Jamie, because Patreon messed up last month. They really do do be like that. Dr. Goatman! Francois V. Hedron Master! Oh, I think this one's for you. I don't want to read this one. Hold up. My dildo just fell out. Don't look at me. No, no. Good slave. JK. (laughs) I like to think that was the response (laughs) to the last one. John what? Uh, Luther Manhole. I really hope that's (laughs) your name and I'm not being mean and making fun of it, but... (sighs) Shouldn't have even brought it up. (laughs) Uh, Nephis Decidia is sheep with crushingly low self-esteem. No. What does sheep have to be upset about? They're soft? That's what I was going to say. I was like, they're cute, they're soft, they make good noises. Fresh air? Friends with dogs? Possum King. Yeah, they get to hang out with dogs. <laughs> <laughs> they do. I want to be a sheep. Possum Kingdom refugee. Random conduit of would you like a hug? Sternod. Vinny, conduit of Valentine's chocolates made with my own quotation mark essence. Is that jizz? Do not enjoy. I'm pretty sure that's jizz. The Z23619. Kevin Dobbins. A lonely gambling pig trying to be King's Valentine. Aw. Charlie Chocolate upped his pledge because he felt bad about that tongue twister. <laughs> <laughs> That's my new strategy is guilting the, <laughs> the patrons and trying to see if they can get up the list. Pumpkin Spice itself. Robert Tuttle. Anthony, patron of Dora. Morgan Rapp. Antonio, conduit of aftercare snacks. <laughs> nice. Foot gummy. <laughs> <laughs> Foot gummy. Haley Anderson. <laughs> Pinko sock. Philip Busman. Sheev, talking shit on a tubular floating crane. <laughs> Do it. Tis I, Zenster. 69 Spoopy 420, Sean Bylorn's nudes. Ludes. I said nudes? That was Freudian. I mean, that's also accurate Mm -hmm. a montage of goth nific staring out into the rain a non-horny gift for austin and a very horny one for the goblin (laughs) a werewolf with the chinese menu in his hand triple a (laughs) i guess just get the top of the alphabetical part or 
Ah! Yeah. Ah! Isaac, conduit of Linux, mascot Tux the Penguin. Aaron Norgard. Abigail Grace. Adrian Y. Aftershock, too busy planning an art expo to update Patreon name. You could have used the time <laughs> changing it to that to change it to something else, though, instead, so. Time management skills. I don't have them either. It's fine. Agent Hedgepiggle. Aggressively weeping and eating ramen. Oh, yeah. That's the stuff. Aggressively? <laughs> have you never seen me go into a full stop, my dude? Yeah, no, there's, I mean, there's powerful weeping, but aggressive seems like, it's like if getting closer and closer to someone <laughs> while doing it. <laughs> Aggressively weeping. <laughs> Aki Sabalainen. Alex Vepra. An otter wanting to be your valentine. Okay. All of otters are my valentine. They would eat you, though. I've had worse holidays. <laughs> Aki Sabalainen. I just said that. I want to talk about otters again. Andrew Birmingham. <laughs> Andrew Fedgy. Fedge? I feel like we've been told. I'm so sorry. A hundred times. <laughs> Conduit of the blood. What is it, then, Austin? Fe J shit fuck <laughs> god damn it conduit of the bloodiest of valentines itself anna anna conduit of procrastination arachnavolt searching for the spider gallahorn to summon the horde love a horde of spiders um, with their daddy long legs because they're cute There's, those aren't spiders they're just close enough. I got you. I got you oh, out there. Shut up. Large <laughs> <laughs> balls. Five armed hugging cactus golem. Oh, too pokey. Ariadne resolving vengeance on Theseus 2020, which is weirdly relevant to this arc. <laughs> Arjan de Koenig. Ash, the gayest bitch in the Midwest. Austin! Still love that Skeksis voice. Isaac, Connie, go, 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 go. Be Dodroid. Be Dodroid. Be Dodroid. Becky Tooth. I talk to Becky all the time, and I don't know if it's Tooth or Toot Hill. I'm sorry. Property of Janiac. <laughs> okay, that's a new strategy. If you don't know how, don't even try. I just said it both ways, so. Mm, I've heard it both ways. BJ, conduit of manager. Manager. Manager giant space hamsters. <laughs> I'm imagining one like in a McDonald's uniform now. B-Ray Echo. Before we continue, I gotta say, I got tiny slimy nips. Big Time Getty Lee, member of Big Time Rush, R.I.P. Neil. Neil. Poor enough for Neil. I mean, he really did just die. Oh. Neil Pert of Rush. Well, pour it out then. Yeah. I mean, they did have slightly libertarian leanings, which is uncool, but he's obviously one of the most talented drivers who ever lived. So you win some, you lose some. <laughs> Blackstone Morgan. Hey, I know him. He's a good friend of mine. Blue Six. Bones. I know it's bone S, but I like to say it. Bones. Bone Tros. Bone Tros. Ghoulie. Undead Nation Secretary General. That 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 reference is way before you were born. Okay, because I don't, I don't get it. I was like two, I think. <laughs> Hold on, this is time for a googly. I'm gonna keep saying words. Brady, god of murder, survivor of Lauren's massacre. I didn't do it. Brett, bro, Jimbo, buy a girl some flowers? Question mark. Callum, Monsieur Garbage, Turner, Cameron Abbas. I'm on my own here, folks. Boutros Boutros Ghali was the sixth Secretary General of the United Nations from 1992 to 1996. So yeah, I was six. I was born in 92. Yeah, I knew that person existed, but I was like, yeah, that was like when I was a kid. That's fun. That's a fun fact. <laughs> you don't seem like you're having fun. I'm having fun. You're the one who's not laughing at any of my jokes that are not bad. Because I was looking up the UN Secretary Generals, a very important thing for this credits. Getting high on knowledge. Uh, I know I said Callum Monsieur Garbage. Turner. Cameron Abbas. Candace, listen to Dice Funk Starling. Caridwin, conduit of crushing on Austin and a respectful... Non-horny way. Chief Beef Thief. 
<laughs> Chloe the dog finds bone pile on her walk. God, you love to see it. They do. Chris, conduit of bad decisions, walling. Christopher Charlo. Coho Blast. Corum is going to miss Smash Fiction. Thank you for being wonderful. Counterfeit. Cucumber. Dandy Snuff. Danielle Marsden, conduit of unnecessary consonants. Daria, go freaking right. Dawning Frost. Daz is lost. Me oh, that's what that is. That is just Daz is lost. Daz is lost. <laughs> Deathworm Jim, sharing the adventures of Harley and Pancake as a weak fac. I don't know, faction? Oh, that's a facade. Hmm. Those sound like animals. Yeah, Pancake is an incredible animal name. Yeah, food and then just regular people names are the best animal names. Decibel! Declan Sands. Dennis Pancake Detlifson. Dice Fuck. Dungeons and Dildo spinoff for dogs? <laughs> Wait, uh, why for dogs? I thought it was just like a horny spinoff, but uh, I guess do- dogs can have little bit have little a dildo as a treat. <laughs> <laughs> what? I don't know. DM Tao. Now I have to do a player shenanigans. My brain is broken. Don Johnston. Dorian, conduit of devotion. Doro. A Dr. Izix. Dragon Nexus. Duck, conduit of stealing your V Day chocolates, then blaming the dog. Dogs can't have chocolates. Dylan and Rylan, or Dylan and Rylan. I'll never stop saying it that way. The dog listening on a lazy Sunday morning also dishes. Dylan, conduit of gift pants. Ebrin, toss a coin to your Lomo O Titty of Plenty. I still haven't watched it because Lauren took my Netflix. It's I don't know why you keep saying that. Because maybe if I keep saying it, you'll give me Netflix. I, I don't have my own I, What are you even talking about, you ding dong? Eowolta. Ecorin. Elder Dog. Elderly Goose. Conduit of doing the best I can in 2020. Eleanor Nanante sees Perichin, Hort Vampire Lady with Depression. Aline? You. Yes, you are a jellical cat. I'm Mr. Mistopheles. Elizabeth Jackalope. Elusive Lily. Emma. Math Tiger is 43.47% correct. And Eagle Vandane. That's not a very good math tiger if they can't even get over 50%. He's a tiger! Let him live! I guess that is good for a tiger. Aaron Leilagadek. Evie. Evie? We'll find out later. Connor will trying out a new name in the credits. Even if we find out later, we won't, we won't get it right then as well. <laughs> Fair Majesty. Empress Quintilian Galaxion. Oh, I'm so glad I just read ahead. Faith and Valor, formerly transient passerby. <sighs> I'm so excited. <laughs> All lowercase, no spaces. <laughs> Filmquisition. Fists are the natural predators of puppets. I don't like that sentence. I think they're more like symbiotic. They need each other. <laughs> It's not a predatory relationship. <laughs> Florian H. Follow Slad Bible on Facebook. Francois Arsenal. Frank Sands. Furry scum infecting the credits prison. A futuristic ferret-based society. That's what the new Star Trek should have been. That's Austin's ideal world. Mm-hmm. Ginger beers. Got more soul than a sock with a hole. Is that a lot of soul or like none? I have literally no idea what that means. It sounds like vaguely sexy. <laughs> <laughs> Grapefruit juice. Although I say that about any time someone incorporates the word whole, I'm just like, mmm. <laughs> Graffiti, conduit of rhetorical vacillation. GSV underscore lasting damage. Halju. Harley the floral. Learcat. Harrison Andrew. Harry, Dad King getting high ratings from the scalies. It's a very scaly season. Hey guys, it's Ashley. How do I make friend? Regards, conduit of social faux pas. Ingmar Grumman. Jaden. James Neely. 
Janiac, Conduit of Teledildonics. We used to talk about Teledildonics a lot on my old podcast. They're really, the field is exploding. Wait, that's a thing? Yeah, it's like when you have a dildo that's like connected to the, a wireless thing uh, and you're part, and then like someone else far away is like controlling the vibration or whatever. Oh, yeah, 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 okay. Or you could simulate it if you have like two people dildoing the, each other, but the force yeah. feedback. I got still- it. I don't know why you're still. <laughs> <laughs> I got it quite a ways back. I got like five more minutes. Why do you? <laughs> You're st- like, hold on, I gotta talk about it. Janiac bullies Austin while I watch. Why? <laughs> oh no! Everyone loves bullying me. Is it a sex thing? <laughs> Jasper, <laughs> New Year, old me. That was meaningful silence on that question. <laughs> it sure was. J Logan, conduit of queerness, mage of life. Jayish wizard, the wizard of Jay. Jealous Goddess Cosplay. Jen. Jenny Colby. Jess Veggie, Conduit of Veggies. Joanna the Wrench Witch. Veggie rhymes with veggie. It sure does, buddy. You're smart, Jess. John Carey, but not that one. John Potts. John Barnett, Conduit of Pillows. John, Conduit of Subpar Joke Names. Josie, Retired Vengeance Paladin. Sun Too Hot. Sun, also too cold. I don't know if you noticed, but uh, apparently today it's the same temperature in Antarctica as it is in Florida. Really? Yup. Oh, that sounds... Bad? Yeah. <laughs> it does. Someone protect the penguins. Jew Man Jack, back from the planet crack. Is that like a crack in the planet, or is that like a special kind of crack? It could be like Planet Hollywood, but all they serve is crack. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Julian Phillips, Conduit of Kaizen. Just a jester. Just Griff McTravel Roy is back for flashback February. Juzzy, Conduit <laughs> of Personal Growth in 2020. Kate, Conduit of Fading Regret. Kiefer Lowe. Kelly offers Austin a hit of Mitzi's Good Good Cat Belly. I would enjoy that, although I would die. Very mm. allergic. Yeah. Keller Automat. Ken Conduit of finally writing this goddamn PhD dissertation. Kenteroy. Kevin, beasterizing into your heart. Beasterizer, I believe, is the uh, original name of Bloody Roar. Uh, I don't know. Killer Cotton Shizno. I'm going to hold on. Let me Google Boutros oh Boutros Oh, my God. Again. Can you go? Can you go fan? Keep going. I'm, I'm googling. Fo, warm snoring burrito, H of Valentine candy, <laughs> Carito Prime. My Patreon saved a life. Damn, that's the opposite of what I wanted. Yeah, Bloody Roar began in 1997 under the name Beasterizer. Okay, I win. I, I'm sure, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> You're very unimpressed with my googling. I gotta <laughs> say, very. Where are we, Christina? Condor to share and needing a hug itself. She really does. Criterion, the smoothest <laughs> of Mario's. I don't know why smooth Mario gets me, but it does. Kyle Badsvik. Kyle, conduit of Drop Goodwood and King Badass Slash Fick. Lady Misfit, Dino Fact, Dino. Dinocorus? Just Dinocorus. That's wrong. I don't care. All right. So here we go again. I'm going to Google Dinocorus. Keep going. Shut up. Larry Yelling Man. Hi, Larry. Who has a show that I'm also a host on called Humans Hollering at News. Plug, 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 plug. Okay. Lars Owner. Ludovico Limited. Luke Powers. Conduit of Flannel itself. Luther. The Conduit of a Button Quail in a Pear Tree. Lynette. X, respect, 2020. Dinocorus look like they're creeping. <laughs> I'm going to put one in the chat for you. They look like John Waters, but a dinosaur. <laughs> that can't be true. I'm putting one in the chat for you. Here Please, you go, Dinoc- do it faster. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they doing that? He's so chunky. It, it, it does basically look like a bozog, honestly. It is so- Tiny little stupid wigs. <laughs> it's like it's not really trying to have wings. What are those even for? <laughs> I don't know where we were. Oh my god. I'm sorry, his stupid 
wings. Uh, I said Lynette X. She's back to 2020. Okay, McLeod, Conduit of Perpetual Haunt. Manticore, Death Lord. The Cult of Gorfinex. Master Zimnahort. Matt Hieo, Zanik. Matt Collier. Matt Lackett is enjoying some sleep and games. Self care is hard. Matthew, listen to Dice Funk and Neo Scum Schultz. Maximum Side Boob celebrating one full year of tasteful nudity. <laughs> Majin, Conduit of 3B. 3B blah, blah, blah. Conduit of 3D printing Dicosauruses for everyone to know. I'm going to assume Dicosauruses are self explanatory. Yeah. Melbent. Melissa the Dice Goblin, lots of goblins in the credits. Mayor of Stone, Conqueror of Mountains, Arbinger of Glory, Forerun. Michael <laughs> <the> Hall. <laughs> middle part. Michelle Minkler, Conduit of Shouting Chris. Relatable. Midlife Stasis, Conduit of Inevitability. I wonder if someone has ever done the math how many episodes end, end with us yelling at Chris. Mike draws Sonic, watching his film with his best friend, you. Miles, conduit of strong bilith opinions, but she fun though. She is fun, and if you don't think Fire- Smash Brothers needs more Fire Emblem characters, you don't understand. You're wrong. I'm sorry. We can't be friends. Just say the names, you dork. No, we need more Fire Emblem characters. This is the hill Modified I'm dying Matthew, on. Matthew, Mr. Willy Phoenix, Steven Lesbian, Seagull, Pooh Bear, Shaker. Namita Aneskin's Conduit of Error. I cut you off. It felt good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, if anything, they should have. They should, mm, no. God, okay. You're so horny for Fire Emblem. <laughs> <laughs> you you always are. You can't even argue. I think instead of Byleth, they should have added all three. See? <laughs> House leaders. They should have got Edelgard <laughs> and Claude. <laughs> and... <laughs> okay. Where are we? Nathaniel Homon? Yeah, you ding dong. Nicholas Dominic. Nicholas McDonald. Nick. Nick Thetford, I forgive you for bringing up Face City. Yeah, uh, you're forgiven. <laughs> Five Hail Marys. <laughs> Nicole Woodruff. Only respect for my McQuare. Hashtag Zoe Fan Club. Paye Robsberg. Pangolin. <laughs> just pangolin and then period. Yeah. Patrick, why did you do this? Do you Pat- know why they did it? Patrick Babcock? <laughs> All caps. Patrick Williams. Please check my webcomic, ruinousfortune.com. Do it. Please tell Johnny I like my sandwiches with the dash of gravy. Thanks. L. All of Johnny's sandwiches are very wet. Pocket Sundial. <laughs> Preston Bowers. You're not going to bring this energy into our good Christian credits. <laughs> Pruitt Pru- Hulk. Pru- oh, Hulk. Oh, you, do you all fucking go? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just rowdy. Puck Boy, which I almost read as fuck boy. And that might be the joke. Pyro Psychotic, because the cake was a lie, and who doesn't like fire? Quantum Materia, Materia Term, Remota, Monoxy, Marmota. Monax Materium Pos. See, that person needs to increase their pledge as an apology. <laughs> Razumi Yazura. Remsev. Robert Chisholm, conduit of Gigantamax Cornelia wrecking shit. I do enjoy to wreck shit. Rule 34, Bob Chiaclone. Chiaclone? It's, it's very Italian. Chiacolone. Oh, I make the lasagna and pay the taxes. S. Kearney, Crisis of Infinite Funk. Salad Child. Scarlet Eyes Yuri. Sean Lyons Burke, Conduit of Manning Byleth out of spite. And also because she's a good character and very fun and has a completely different moveset than any of the other Fire Emblem Sword users. I thought you were going to cut me off. I didn't really have any more. I was trying to be nice this time. Oh, thanks. Summons, conduit of harder, slotty. Sergeant Rattlebones, another year of skeleton warfare. Shane Sedgwick. Shane Ware, conduit of hedonistic pansexual polyamorous switches. Simon Lee, conduit of chungus, bear dinkus, <laughs> minion of John Con. Sin Milk Tom. Sir Octopus, conduit of chivalrous cephalopods. Slime King Mike, conduit of gamer goo. That's also jizz. 
<laughs> there also is a product called Gamer Goo, and I only know this because a journalist I follow bought it to test it, and then I think she basically covered her entire body in Gamer Goo. Something something username. It's not only jizz. Spaghetto arrested for Epcot <laughs> crimes. Sporeman Zero. They love the Epcot crime. Starlight Glimmer did nothing wrong. Stefan Lund votes for Fedora Cloud Vare and BBE on Dice Monk next season. Steven Martinez, protector of Austin's bussy. There wasn't as much bussy uh, threatening this month, I have to say. It's, I feel relatively safe. Well, see, you, you fucking idiot. You just <laughs> admitted it out loud, and now they're going to do it more. Please. I'm so fragile. Sweet dreams are made of these. Who am I to disagree? Sydney Marzing. Sorry that pack south soaking in that sun. This is in Texas, right? I think so. Tabitha Spokes. Tales of Inquiry. Terraflops. Terezi Pyro transing June Egbert. Thanks, Austin. Great show. <laughs> so wholesome. <laughs> That's the kind of comment I can get behind. Clear to the point. Doesn't involve my bussy. I love it. The murderous mongoose who is secretly standing directly behind you. The precursor. The tasty cakes that Yorski bakes. <laughs> I haven't baked anything in the hundred years. Toby Gleason Stack. Tom Bowers. Trees, they are us. Or trees, they are us. Tracy Therius. Oh, dinosaur. Trevor S., the goblin teacher. Shay summoning tentacles for Austin's 30th. Prep the bussiness. <laughs> I, I spoke too soon. <laughs> you really did. Universal Toby. William Vink. Will you be my Yamantine? <laughs> That's more romantic. Yams are high in vitamins and minerals. Uh... Willem Dafoe's Secret Sunday. <laughs> that feels like a, a Boston's favorite sun pitch. J Jonathan, Jonathan, I have a movie. It's called Willem Dafoe's Secret Sunday. I would, I would watch that. Conrad's on it. You like Conrad? I don't know why you're trying to call me out in front of everybody. <laughs> I'm enjoying Conrad's content. I'm shut up. <laughs> Ziphosaurus. Zoltar, the Viking death metal caterpillar conduit of retribution. ZZZ, maybe Austin will read these in reverse order. Also, I've, I can look ahead and see you got scooped, ZZZ. Good try, though. Also, why would you ever, why would you read it in reverse? You've never done that. Because I'm a dipshit who keeps fucking up spreadsheets. Okay, ZZZ, y'all want first spot, but Lauren Kate's galaxy brains to get last word. One, two, three, four. Good try, Lauren Cates, but someone used the, I guess, I think it's like a Danish letter, which is an A and an E together, as in like ether. So Einar J is under that. And then someone else used punctuation. So I'm only one it happen. I oh, wait, I'm only one it. I'm only happy <laughs> when it rains, Zucas. You're not going to, you want to do garbage voice? What's garbage voice? I'm Only Happy When It Rains is a song by Garbage, and she has that... I don't know everything, Yorski. What's her name? Shirley Manson? Her Shirley. Oh, I've heard of her. Yeah, Shirley Manson. I'm only happy when it rains. I'm obviously a much more masculine sound, but it has a distinct... Anyway, they put quotations around it, so it's at the bottom of the list. I was like, you singing it isn't going to make me have heard it. But it might have reminded you that you heard it on the radio in the 90s when it was popular. No. They also have one of the best Bond themes. I'm just going to go out there. Unpopular opinion. You have so many opinions today. Especially about Byleth and James Bond? <laughs> What's the... That sounds like you, honestly. What's my personality? <laughs> What's my brand? It's dumb. <laughs> Hurtful. Okay, <laughs> so... No, Support the people on the show. Uh, we got obviously patreon.com slash Laura K Buzz. That's her. You got Laura K Buzz.com, Laura K Buzz on Twitter, all the Laura K Buzz. I, I mean, the links are in the description. You're aware of them. Patreon.com slash weekly manga recap. That's Chris. Patreon.com slash of horse. That's Conrad. <gasps> Patreon.com slash Austin Yorsky. That's me. That's how that list happens. And then, of course, Lauren, not Laura, Lauren. What are you? Where are you? I'm Rargalicious on Twitter. That is R-A-W-R-G-L-I-C-I-O-U-S. 
Also, starting in March, I am also a regular co-host on a podcast called Humans Hollering at News. Look it up. It's fun. It's fun and nice. Oh, I also looked it up. That Dinocorus, that that one that looks like a Bozog mixed with uh, John Waters. Its name is Greek for horrible hand, which is also what my girlfriends call me. Oh, my God. (laughs) But I'm... (laughs) (laughs) You're so proud of that one.